Hi everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. Now today, I'm gonna be reviewing the new Garmin Lily 2. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly and so you can help the channel grow. So the Garmin Lily 2 here is a hybrid smartwatch. It looks like kind of your traditional timepiece and it does have a hidden digital display. So I do have the Lily 2 here in the color metallic lilac and it came out in some other great colors that you could see on screen. Now the Lily 2 here came out in a couple of different versions. We have the silicone version, which I have right here. We have a nylon band version and we have a leather band version. Now, depending on the one you pick, the price is gonna fluctuate with silicone being the least expensive and leather being the most expensive. Now, the current price as of recording for this one here with the silicone band is 339.99 Canadian and 249.99 American. And now I'm gonna go into the major spec highlights about this smartwatch so you can get an idea about what it can do. So the Garmin Lily 2 here is a hybrid touchscreen smartwatch. It has battery life up to five days. It can track your sleep. You can see a bunch of daily metrics like your steps, your calories burned, your active minutes. It does have body battery as well. It tracks a variety of workouts and activities like running, walking, and dance. It's water resistant up to five ATM or 50 meters, so you can take it in the pool, in the rain, and even in the shower. It has a 14 millimeter quick release watch band. You can enter and deny text messages, enter and deny phone calls, and it also has connected GPS, which means it requires your smartphone for GPS activities. And I listed some more on screen for you. Now these are not all of the specs about the smartwatch, but these are definitely the most important, I think. And if you're finding this video helpful so far, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Now the Garmin Lily 2 is Garmin's second smartwatch that Garmin made exclusively for women. When they marketed it, they're like, this is for women, you'll love the small size the pretty colors, and to be honest, I do really like those things about this smartwatch. We have a Lily 1 original version that came out a bit over a year ago. If you guys are interested in what the Lily 1 has to offer, I've done a full review on that, which you can find at the top right and also linked in the description below. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like on me. I do have a seven inch wrist. Now, my favorite thing about the Lily two here is just how small it is and how lightweight it is. You might not notice like how small it is in the camera, but this is a very slim and small and sleek smartwatch. So just to give you guys a little bit of a comparison on how small the Lily 2 is, I have it right beside the Garmin Venue 2S, which is also a pretty small smartwatch. It's called the Venue 2S, S stands for small. Now you guys can see how they do stack up beside each other. So the Lily is just like very, very small even comparing it to the Venue 2S, which is already a small smartwatch. Now this smartwatch for me has given me no irritation, no issues, it's been very comfortable to wear. Uh, something that's great for me, but I do think it looks really nice on. Now I'm going to go ahead and put all the wrist sizes this could fit on screen for you. Now a great thing about the Lily 2 here is that it does fit some really small wrist sizes that other smartwatches just can't do. And I think that's one of the reasons that Garmin was marketing this and pushing it out to women is because a lot of women do have small wrist sizes. One thing I don't love about the band here is that we do have this like built-in watch loop or watch keeper and you can't move this one around. I do just find it annoying <laughs> that I'm not able to move it around. Now one great thing about the band here versus the Lily one is that we have a quick release watch band. Now what I said on the original Lily they had this mechanism where you'd have to like pull out these little screws and twist them counterclockwise and just it was just the biggest hassle to change that band, to be honest. So I really like that they gave us just the classic quick release band, super easy to just pop that out and switch out your band. It does have a hidden digital display. Now in my experience, it's been very readable. You guys could see at different angles here, I could still read the display. When you are outdoors, it does become a bit harder to see. It does get pretty bright, so you can read it in most situations, but if you're in really sunny conditions, it does become a little bit harder to read. So I definitely would recommend just leaving this thing on auto brightness because depending on the lighting you're in, you really need to kind of pump up the backlight there so you can read it. And this does not have an always on display option for those of you wondering. I swear if Garmin did that, this thing wouldn't even last the day. <laughs> so that's probably why we don't have that option available. 
So now I'm gonna show you guys how this works, just going over the basics here. So the first thing to do is to turn on the display. You can tap the smartwatch, like double tap to turn it on. There are no physical buttons. It has like an under display button here. You can press that and that will turn on the display as well. Also works as a back button. And if you have gestures turned on, you can go ahead and turn it towards your face and the screen will light up. The next thing you can do is you can swipe down and you can see a little shortcut menu here. If I go left or right from the home screen, I'll see all of my like widgets on here. And if you do go ahead and click on something, then you can see a bigger view. So here we could see weather for the next three days. If I do click this from the home screen, you could see activities here. Now this smartwatch does track a good amount of activities. I'm just gonna show you all the ones I have on here. So I know a lot of you always wonder like, what can they track? I really like the little animations here too. <laughs> you can see your clock, so you can set an alarm, timer, you can use a stopwatch, you can turn on and off sensors, you can turn on and off your safety tracking um, ability. This does have incident detection during certain workouts like runs and walks, so if you do like fall down or hurt yourself or the watch notices an impact like that, it will send automatic kind of safety alerts to contacts that you have, a feature that I know some people really like. So another thing you can do is you can see your watch faces on here. I'm just gonna show you guys the watch face options as well. So for the watch faces, we do have some good options here. Keep in mind, they are all monochrome and there are not a lot of watch face options. What I showed you are all of the watch face options here and you do not have an option to download or get any more. So what you see is what you get. And I would have loved to have more watch face options personally. Also going further into the settings, we can change things about our display, the vibration settings. You could turn on and off like your phone connectivity, activity options, sleep mode, and more. And that is the basics on how to use this smartwatch here. It does have a little bit of a learning curve in my experience, but it's not too hard to learn how to use. Now, when it comes to the battery life on the Garmin Lily 2, the battery life is up to five days as a smartwatch. Now, with my usage here, things like connected GPS walks, runs, daily alarms, timers, and more, I have gotten on average three to three and a half days of battery life. I could not push this thing over three and a half days no matter what I try. I'd even turning off the Bluetooth and skipping a workout, whatever the case is, I couldn't get it past that with my usage. Now, I think Garmin could have done better here. Charge it about twice a week. I mean, I have other smartwatches from Garmin that literally can last over a week on one charge, so I would have loved to see a longer battery life here. On the bright side, this smartwatch does charge pretty quickly, maybe due to its smaller size. It fully charges from like zero to 100 in about an hour and 10 minutes. Now, those are the battery life results that I have gotten with my usage. Battery life, of course, is something that's gonna fluctuate. You might get something higher or lower depending on your individual usage because we all use our smartwatches differently. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is women's health. So for my males out there, anyone else who doesn't wanna see this section, you can go ahead and use my timestamps and jump to the next section where I'm gonna be talking about sleep tracking. The smartwatch does have women's health. With that here, you can go ahead and you can track your daily symptoms, your mood. You can track physical symptoms that you're feeling and noticing. You can track your mood and you can track this stuff every day, not just on your period, which I think is great. And I love that we have a variety of mood options here. Not just like happy, sad, there's more. You can also track if you have any discharge that you're noticing and you can say your ovulation day. You can put your sex drive in here as well. With Garmin, with their women's health, it is quite adjustable. So you can take options out or add options in if you want to in the Garmin app. For example, if you don't wanna see sex drive, if you don't wanna see ovulation, you can take those things off in the app and they'll only show you the other options. So it is quite customizable. And what you can do here, you can also track in the app. I like it better in the app because we have some more colors and emojis and it's just a bit faster to navigate through things. And in the app, you also get period prediction. Now in my experience, the period prediction from Garmin has been spot on accurate. I'm using it for years and it's never once been wrong. And I think the women's health is great. It's something that I can use daily just to track how I'm feeling and also on my period as well, just to keep kind of an eye on my health. It's an extra metric here that's helpful. 
So this smartwatch does have sleep tracking on here. And one thing I like about it is that you can just wake up in the morning and you have all your sleep data there available to view. I don't have to connect to my phone like you have to do on some other smartwatches. So the sleep tracking here, you do track your sleep stages, which are your deep sleep, your REM sleep, your time awake, and your light sleep. So you can see a breakdown here, a little graph showing all of that, as well as a specific breakdown of your sleep stages. I think the sleep tracking here is good. I would not say it's great. I do think that Garmin does need to work on the accuracy of their sleep stages because I do find them off. Primarily the light sleep and, and time awake, I feel like they interchange them in the incorrect way and the time awake is usually too low. But when it comes to your sleep score, and a sleep message, whatever the sleep message is, is usually on point for me. And I find the sleep score pretty good as well. So when it comes to the heart rate sensor here, we do have Garmin's Elevate Poor Heart Rate Sensor. This is not the newest heart rate sensor, it's not the oldest, it's honestly kind of in between. This heart rate sensor has been really great in my experience. It's been accurate, whether I'm just lounging around the house, whether I'm working out, it does pick up my heart rate really well. This heart rate sensor is a really good option for those of you who like to do HIIT activity. I find it excels at tracking quick heart rate changes like that. If you do wanna see kind of a bigger thing of your heart rate, you can open up one of your widgets to do so. Like right now, you can see. I do have experience with doing like, you know, first aid and medical things. I do know how to palpate heart rate. From what I've done, you know, testing out my heart rate here, counting it, and then looking at the watch, it's been spot on. I really think this heart rate sensor is great and Garmin in general is just really good at getting quality heart rate sensors in their smartwatches. So now I'm gonna get into some cons I've noticed about this smartwatch. So the first con for me is that sometimes when I'm tapping the display or trying to tap the button, it just doesn't recognize my taps. Right now it is, which is great, but it is something that's annoying because it happens at least once daily. So I definitely think that the controls could be a bit more refined here. And this is also something I noticed with the Lily One, so I'm not happy that they didn't really improve that aspect of it. Another con for me is that SpO2 sensor, it needs some help. Sometimes I think the SpO2 sensor shows up way too low. Most people's SpO2 is between 97 to 100%. This routinely will be lower than that. So take the SpO2 readings with a grain of salt, it's not the most accurate out there. Another con for me is that because because this is like more of a fitness tracker than a smartwatch, it's missing a lot of features. So we don't have our barometric altimeter, so we don't have elevation that we can track. We can't track our floors climbed as well. We also don't have built-in GPS. We have connected GPS. So these are some things that I do not love, especially with the price point, because $340 is a lot of money. Adding tax onto that, almost $400 Canadian. And in America, and that's probably almost $300 depending on where you live. So it's a lot of money here to be missing out on those features. So I don't really like that. And I also don't love that we have Garmin's older heart rate sensor in 2024. It's 2024, like we should have the newest heart rate sensor on here, especially for the price point, which is not cheap. Also a con for me is that it is made of Garmin's cheaper materials being aluminum around the watch here instead of stainless steel. Aluminum is cheaper, it's lighter, it's also not as durable, so definitely a con for me here as well. And all right guys, considering the price, the quality, the color, the performance, the features, the comfort, the battery life, and everything like that, I would go ahead and give this a 7.5 out of 10. I definitely do give it a thumbs up. So if you guys are interested in picking up the Garmin Lily 2 here, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. Just a little sneak peek on what is coming next. I'm gonna be doing a full comparison on the Lily 2 here versus the Lily 1, the original Garmin Lily. So if you guys are interested in checking out that video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with your post notification bells turned on so you don't miss that. It's gonna be dropping on an ABB Reviewing Tech Tuesday soon. And if there's anything I missed today that you wanna know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. I do read all the comments, so I'll definitely get back to you. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.